I am extremely honored to be here in, in these prestigious venues, in these prestigious sites, to present my small contribution to our understanding of this very important civilization for the entire humankind. So first of all, I wish to thank the organizer of this conference for having invited me, in particular, Dr. Kalimula Lashari and all the, the organizers of this conference. So what I wanted to present in this conference is the actual use of all the seals that my colleagues are, are studying from a technological, morphological point of view, the, the organization of the inscription, but my particular contribution is in which sector of the life, the daily life, they were used, actually. So I think it's very important to also frame the use of the script uh, present on these objects. So over the past 15 years, I studied several collections of the so-called clay ceilings, which are the impression made using Hindu seals on small lumps of clay applied on the locking devices of several containers, doors, and um, other containers. Uh, they were not for security, they were used for administration to prevent people opening and closing without leaving record of what they did. So this type of technology and administrative procedures started very early in the Middle East, like in the six, uh, seven millennium BC, by the Neolithic community in their process of sedentarization. Basically, they created large communal storehouses, and while some people have to leave the, the villages, they closed their own stuff into these communal warehouses, they locked them with their, their seals, and when they come back, they can open. The, the seal was, ceiling was still there, so they knew that no one access, no one steal or manipulate their, their own properties. But over the next millennia, this changed a lot because the society became much more complex. There were emergency of palaces, the so-called central hierarchical structures of power is called by the expert. So the ceiling became used, seals and ceiling became used in the same place by bureaucrats at the service of the, the governors, basically, of this institution, of these cities, these regions, that they were managing mainly food ration, food surplus, to mobilize human workforce for several, several reasons. So we are trying to understand where is the position of the Hindu civilization between these two extremes, or if they created something alternative, which is, is also very possible. So I studied with some colleagues, with, including Professor Mark Neuer and his students, the origin of the clay used for making these ceilings because uh, several colleagues working in different regions of Asia discovered that they were not used, as was originally thought, to secure the shipping of, God, of, uh, of packages, but they were used in the internal administration of storehouses and other buildings. So this is extremely important also because allowed us to have a correct interpretation also of the use of seals and then the scripts on the seals. So some mm, colleagues already mentioned several times by my colleagues, Asko Parpola from Finland, he discovered that at the site that I first studied, Lothal in Gujarat, there were a couple of seals found at site that were used to close ceilings also found at the site. So this uh, is a proof that the Hindu civilization probably followed the same procedures used in the Middle East. And this is somehow understandable because there were crossed links between all the civilization based mainly on trade. So that if they were using the same administration for trading and managing their 
commercial activities, they were able to interact on a common ground. So this made also, this helped us to understand and to make clear the function of seals because some pol colleagues in the past pointed out the possibility that seals were used in the Indo civilization in a slightly different ways because in the Indo civilization we have a small number of these clay ceilings used for administration while in the Middle East there are sites, several sites with many thousands of them and in the Indus we have just a couple of hundreds and the largest cluster is 70. So here in Monjodaro I think less than 10 were found. So m my first question was why we have this difference? Because the, comp the, the ceilings in the Indus civilization are extremely complex. These are two specimens from Monjodaro one has several impressions of different seals, the other one was scratched with Hindu signs, one from it was removed from the container. So the system was extremely complex. I had the chance to work with one of the major specialists of this topic in the world, so she gave me some advices for my, for my research. And most of all, she helped me to understand that the largest cluster in of these clay ceilings found in the world were found within uh, buildings burned down by fire. And so probably the fact that the earliest clay ceilings found at Arapa was found into a fireplace and that the largest cluster from Lothal was found in a burned down building is not a case, is not accidental. So, and this also is supported also by the fact that all the, sec the original excavators of Mohenjo-daro told us that buildings burned down by fire in the Indus civilization are extremely rare. So this is also one of the possible explanation of the difference in the, in, in the regions and also probably the, the excavation techniques we have also to consider. So then I entered into what is the core of my research somehow try to understand which object were sealed, which object were controlled in an administrative way in the Indus civilization because seals were used to control ceilings, to make tokens, to stamp ceramic containers before the firing or to control complex uh, manufacturing processes. So I focus on the ceilings created to control rooms, movable containers, and what they stored in. So, square seals were used, bear seals were used, geometric seals were used, and also um, inscribed tablets. And these two uh, classes of objects are interesting because uh, um, geometric seals uh, close mainly doors, and this is quite strange, but Shape tablets are important in this context for the study of Hindu script because they were considered uh, like tokens for votive offerings. So in that case, the script was uh, readable directly from the object, while I demonstrate that, <coughs> that at least some of them uh, were uh, created to be the inscription read only once stamped on clay. So all the statics, statistics that my colleagues are applying uh, to understand the script as to now to consider also this um, this information so the administrative procedures in the Indus were very complex they had multiple impression of different seals on the same ceiling the same seal was used together uh, alone or together with other seals to stamp different type of containers so there is a complex administrative network going on in in the site and interestingly for the study of Hindu script and, and Hindu seals is that Hindu ceilings retain almost exclusively the impression of the inscription and not of the animal. So probably this means that the inscription had a main significance in the administration and the animal on the seals had, it was mainly probably used for direct visual identification of the, of the person. So to understand the different uh, devices that were closed, that they were uh, managed, I took impression of the backsides of the, of the ceilings, and I found that um, 
this is the high percentage of um, uh, containers that were also controlled in Mesopotamia and in other regions, which is understandable because uh, they were uh, pottery containers, doors, something very, uh, very commonly used in a mm, third millennium site. But uh, what is interesting in, is that in the Indus times they also have a unique storage technology. I found uh, like ceilings of s different structures, including wooden cages, like in, in this case, or um, structures made by reeds, some metal clips, some strange objects that I still don't know the, the actual use. I propose that maybe they were different ways of closing doors, or maybe they were used to secure something, not manuscript, we cannot say that, but they are very similar to seals used for um, palm leaf manuscripts, so maybe they were used to secure something that were very fragile, very small, very precious, because they were made with very tiny threads and complex knots. So, I skip these animations. And so basically, the results of my words were that the Indus civilization shared the same bureaucratic procedures used in Mesopotamia. They used the, the same concept of administration that would probably allow them to exchange and complete transac uh, economic transaction on the same ground. But they also have uh, a unique technology for storing objects that probably reflect the fact that they were not managing the same type of goods that they were managing in Mesopotamia, where they mainly stored and controlled food, grains, grain, wet barley, and to pay people in food, basically. Here in the Indo civilization, my opinion, this is just an assumption, is that they were controlling raw materials and goods of economic and uh, ideological importance in the Hindu society. For example, the steatite used for making the seals. That is something that has possibly controlled at a centralized level in this way. So for what concern instead the um, study of Hindu script, of course the main uh, contribution of the study of sealings is that we know that the inscription on the seals have to be read as they were uh, in a mirror because they were readable wo only one stamp on clay and that some other category of uh, objects that they were considered the script to be read directly from the, the object now we know that uh, the inscription has to be mirrored in order to be correctly studied from a statistical point of view. Thank you very much.